Hello again, everybody. Welcome back. I honestly wasn't expecting you guys to hit that mark yet, but here we are. This actually happened so fast that it kind of blindsided me. So much so that I had to put a previous video on hold, but this is actually kind of beneficial. The reason why is because finals week is upon me and I don't have the time to make a new video on a new game. So, I now have the pleasure to spend my weekend hauling ass through four more Force Unleashed levels. But hey, at least I have a cheat code costume that I can use to hide the pain as the levels introduce more bullshit on top of the previous bullshit. Like the last video, I will be playing on Sith Warrior because anything above that will be pure suffering and pain. And for those who want to know, all the music that I use in this video will be in the description down below, along with the link to the first video so you can catch up. So without further ado, let's get on to the game. Cuddle leads us to Kashyyyk because that's where we need to find an informant that helped him escape the Empire. Juno protests because we're going down to an Imperial-controlled planet, but we touch down anyways. Finding Starkiller's old house, but we don't really care and get into the game. Now, we aren't even 5 seconds into the gameplay, and we have already come across another headache. The Flame Trooper. Even though the Flame Trooper appears a couple of times throughout the level, these guys are still a pain to deal with. If you get close to them, they start torching you with their flamethrower, which begins to evaporate your health bar. Now, you'd think these guys would be easy to deal with. Just stand a couple of meters away and throw stuff at them. But no, it isn't that simple, because they have shields. Now you have to get up and close to break the shields, which drains your health, and then you have to fight an ATSD after that, which makes the whole section pretty annoying. After we fight our way through some more stormtroopers and destroy a comms tower, Starkiller meets Princess Leia and tries to get her to leave, but she wants Starkiller to destroy his skyhook. So we fight our way through some more stormtroopers and free some Wookiees along the way until we reach the skyhook. Now, your main goal is to pull seven pylons out of their sockets to overload the skyhook and destroy it. But you also have to fight through an ungodly amount of purge troopers, and by the time you rip the second pylon out, you have to fight General Stern in a modified ATST. So I obviously died and had to do that all over again. One thing I forgot to mention in the last video was the fact that when you get too far away from a purge trooper, they will fire a tracking rocket at you that does a ton of damage and stuns you. Which made this section much worse than it had to be. I kill everything around the skyhook before ripping out the first two pylons, Stern coming out to fight me, I kill Stern, and then I rip out the last pylons, saving thousands of Wookiees on the planet in the process. The Wookiees cheering on the skyhook's destruction before I leave, trying to forget the mental anguish I just went through. When we get back under the Rogue Shadow, we ask Coda who Leia was, where he tells us that she's Bail Organa's daughter. We then ask where Bail is, and Coda tells us that he went to go find a Jedi who could rescue his daughter after Coda turned him down, learning that he went to Felucia to go find Shock T before he went missing. And since we already know that she's dead, we have to go to Felucia before anything bad happens. Once the gameplay starts, I make my way through Felucians and Imperials alike before I reach a valley, an ATST dropping out of the sky like an ODST that I quickly destroy before making my way through the rest of the valley and eventually reaching the Sarlacc pit. Turns out he didn't pay his bill for his denture, so the Empire got pissy and shoved a whole mining rig down its throat. I go around the area and activate three generators to turn on an elevator, entering the belly of the beast, making my way through the creature's intestines, trying to find Bail Organa before ending up in a chamber and being blown out through a blow hole. I make my way through the forest, not killing the Rancors because I don't have the time, before eventually finding Bill Organa. But then Shock T's apprentice shows up with a giant pet Rancor, initiating a fight. Now, I only died in this fight once, and that's because Maris likes to jump in and double team me, but when I fight Maris one on one, it isn't even close. I quick time her to death, and after the fight, Maris somehow convinces Starkiller to let her go against Bale's better judgment. But Starkiller explains that she'll never be free because she will remember what she did here. Ending the mission. After Bail Organa agrees to help us, we return to the ship and contact Darth Vader, asking him for his help on where we should strike first, Vader giving us the location of a shipyard that we can sabotage on Raxus Prime. Once the call ends, Starkiller realizes that Juno was watching the conversation the entire time. She's obviously angry about all of this, but agrees to take us to Raxus Prime anyways, the level starting afterwards. I quickly rush through the level, destroying Rodian scavengers left and right before reaching an arena full of Rodians and purge troopers, so I decide to take all the holocrons I can find and leave as quickly as possible. On my way to the next area, I get a transmission from Juno telling us that Proxy left the ship but I have bigger problems right now. I run into an Imperial drop base, and after clearing out all the surrounding enemies outside, the door of the base opens. I quickly destroy the ATST and cut through the surrounding enemies before taking an elevator to the roof of the base, hijacking a ship and taking it to the railgun, where I cut my way through the enemies there, solve a puzzle, and run into a Shadow Guard, who I fight for a bit before revealing himself to be Proxy, beginning the boss fight. Now, the first phase of this fight is just all the other previous boss battles stuffed into one character, but the second phase is where things get interesting. After I lower his health bar, Starkiller tells Proxy to shut down because we basically fought everybody that he has. 
before Proxy reveals that he saved up just one person for this moment. Darth Maul. After I lower Darth Maul's health, I quick time it to death, cutting his lightsaber in two, throwing him into a pillar, and stabbing him in the chest with both of his lightsabers before we continue forwards, taking the elevator to the top of the railgun. Once we make it to the top, we overload four generators, destabilizing them enough and causing it to fire a massive chunk at the factory, completely destroying it, but a Star Destroyer manages to escape the carnage, starting the most infamous section of the game, tearing down the Star Destroyer. In this section, you have to destroy all the TIE Fighters around you before you get the chance to pull the Star Destroyer down into the shipyard. Now, you think this section would be easy, but it is much harder than you think it is because midway through pulling the Star Destroyer down, it sends more TIE Fighters at you. So now you have to deal with those. And to make things even harder, the Star Destroyer reorients itself mid-battle while you're dealing with the TIE Fighters. So it just becomes a back and forth of pulling the Star Destroyer down, dealing with the TIE Fighters, reorienting the Star Destroyer, and pulling it down again. After 10 minutes of this back and forth, I manage to rip the stupid destroyer out of the sky. But Starkiller can't stop it, so he jumps off the platform to avoid being hit. After crawling out of the wreckage, Proxy crawls out of the wreckage himself and relays that his main function was destroyed and asks Starkiller to leave him on Raxus, but Starkiller refuses and helps him onto the ship. The mission ending. When Starkiller gets out of the Rogue Shadow, he contacts Vader again and asks to take over from here, Vader granting this request before Starkiller and crew all arrive on the snow planet, along with Bail Organa and some others, where Ram Coda returns to his old self, and they all officially form the Rebel Alliance. To make a very long cutscene short, Darth Vader crashes down on the party, kidnaps a couple of senators, and throws Starkiller off a cliff. You agreed to stay away! I lied. Juno then picks him up and gets him onto the ship, he meditates for a bit, and figures out that the senators are being held on the Death Star. We quickly go to the Death Star, Juno giving Starkiller a good luck kiss as he jumps down into the Death Star, tearing support beams out with the force on the way down before landing in the hangar, starting the mission. Where I'm immediately swarmed by snipers, stormtroopers, purge troopers, and walkers. After dying multiple times, I managed to clear out enough enemies before diving even deeper into the station. I traverse through the Death Star's lasers, completing puzzles and cutting through enemies along the way before reaching convergence point through a bunch of lasers. And after activating the energy lift, I feel something call out to me. I take the energy lift to the top of the Death Star and see a holocron in the distance, and after some parkour, I finally grab it. A black lightsaber crystal, which I immediately switch my color to before proceeding to the Emperor's chambers, fighting through a group of royal guards before unlocking the door and making my way to the senators, only to be stopped by Darth Vader himself, starting a boss fight. Darth Vader's first phase isn't too hard, but in the second phase, he hops onto a platform and begins to throw stuff at you, which I quickly grab with the force and throw back at him, and after I get some cheap shots in, he destroys all the platforms in the room except for two. We fight there for a little bit before I quick time him into the Emperor's chambers, where he tries to goad me into killing Vader. Before I can make a decision, Coda steals the Emperor's lightsaber and tries to attack him, the Emperor turning around and electrocuting him in response. I quickly rush over to save Coda, where I begin the Sidious boss fight which isn't that difficult once you get the pattern down. After the fight, Starkiller goes to kill the Emperor, but Coda stops him. As Coda is convincing Starkiller, the Emperor shoots lightning at Coda again, but Starkiller jumps in the way, buying everyone enough time to escape, but at the sacrifice of his own life. On Kashyyyk, Coda, Bale, and the rest of the Rebellion's leaders all form the Alliance, using Starkiller's father's crest as his emblem, Juno watching the stars above away from the group before Coda walks up to her. Juno then asks why he helped them, and he responds that even though he saw that darkness within Starkiller at the bar, he did see a speck of light left. The game ending there. All in all, I think The Force Unleashed is a pretty alright game with a few problems, but that doesn't mean you should avoid this game. It's pretty fun from start to finish and has a bunch of side content like the training room and collectibles like lightsaber colors, crystals, and force spears that you can collect. Even though I talk a lot of shit about this game, I still really enjoyed my experience, and there's far more good that outweighs the bad. Before I go, I'd just like to thank all of you for 200 subscribers and 10,000 views on the Halo Spartan Assault video. I'm really glad I reached that milestone that quickly, and I also really enjoyed reading the comments. So I have something on the way for you guys specifically, so stay tuned. But like always, hit the subscribe button if you enjoy content like this, share this around so I can grow as a channel, and I will see you guys next time.